How would you describe an alpha male? All the girls want to be with him, right? All the guys want to be him. He's strong. He's muscular. He's powerful. He's handsome. He's rich. He's popular. He's famous. What is an alpha? What is a beta? You know, you've heard these terms before to describe men. And if you ask different people, you'll get different points of view on, on uh, what an alpha is, what a beta is. You know, I know that in the animal kingdom, because I used to study wolves, is the alpha meant you're the leader of the pack. You're the, you're the top dog. You're the male who's in charge of the, of, the, of the whole pack. You know, and if we apply this same concept to our world, you could say that the president of the United States... Or the president of your country, of your nation, he's the alpha. The CEO of your workplace, he's the alpha. The bishop in your church, he's the alpha. The husband and the family, he's the alpha. So where does that put betas? What's a beta? You know, sometimes a beta will rise up and challenge the alpha. You know, sometimes... They may even defeat them or whatever and take their spot. Sometimes they don't. And sometimes it's good to replace the alpha. Because they can get greedy, mischievous, abusive. And sometimes dangerous. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis back at you with another message today. Uh, today I want to talk about envy. Specifically, you know... I know the title says, uh, do betas envy alphas, but um, today's message is going to be about envy in general. What it is, why, why is it wrong? Is it wrong to envy? Um, you know, how can we avoid envy if it is wrong? I'm going to start off with the Old Testament. Um, so if you want to read along with me, I always read out of the King James Bible. And we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 18. But first I want to give a quick little background of, of what's happening before I read it. So we can get a context of what's going on. King Saul, who is the first king of Israel, is ruling right now. And, you know, he was anointed to be king by the prophet Samuel. Ultimately, he was appointed by God. But um, he was anointed by Samuel, the prophet. And that, and that just means, you know, Samuel... Uh, was a prophet, meaning he was a great man of God. He followed the commandments. He did what was right. Um, he helped lead the people in, into uh, righteousness and teach him the Bible, teach him God's ways. He led by example. And, and God blessed him and he spoke to him and he, and he told him that uh, um, to anoint uh, King Saul as, as Israel's first king. And, you know, even though God God wanted to be the king of Israel, you know, um, he wanted to be their God. He wanted to be their leader. He wanted to be the Alpha. But the people said, no, 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 no. We want, we want a king. We want a man to rule over us like all the other nations. <laughs> we, want, we want a man to be our Alpha leader. And, you know, that upset God because God's a jealous God. Um, and you know, why do they do that? You know, maybe they were just lazy. <laughs> I think they were just lazy, you know, they wanted they wanted somebody else to fight their battles for them. You know, they, they didn't want the burden of having to uh, uh, fend, or excuse me, what's the word, like take responsibility for themselves to obey God. And, you know, even though Sam, Samuel warned them, he said, you know, God does not approve of this, guys. God does not want us to have a king like every other nation. God wants to be our king. But, you know, eventually the king... Or um, Samuel warned him that eventually the king would get greedy. He'd rule over them with an iron fist and they wouldn't like it. They would hate it because he'd treat them harshly. Um, <laughs> kind of like what they just came from, from Egypt. You know, I think, I think they figured, you know, if, if God's our alpha, if God's our leader, then that means we have to obey him and God's strict. You know, he punishes us. Hard, you know, it's too, it's too much work, it's too much burden, you know, maybe a man, maybe if we appoint a man to be our alpha, he'll go easier on us, you know, and, and on a side note here, I wanted to say that, you know, I think, 
that's how a lot of some of us are, you know, especially like I think of a, of women, you know, they, they want that handsome stallion, right? They want that knight in shining armor to come in and just sweep them off their feet and take care of them. And, you know, somebody they can idolize and respect, you know, who might be easier on them than God would, right? Some, let, let them get away with things and not punish them so bad. And, you know, but what, what ends up happening a lot of the time, you know, they idolize this man. And then he eventually screws up in some way, somehow, some shape and form. Because we all do. We're just men. He may get get greedy, may may abuse them even, and then and then they feel like they're justified in rebelling against him, even though they married him, and and said, oh yeah, you're gonna be our, you're gonna be my king, you're gonna be my husband, and then they eventually rebel and divorce him. When you know they could have just made God their leader the whole time in the first place, and God would have fought their battles for her, and, and you know that's not to say that she should remain single if God if God's uh, her leader. Because God told women to get married and submit to their husbands. You know, what What does God say though? You know, God says, worship me, make me your alpha, make me your leader, and I'll take care of you. And, and you know, God promises that, you know, if we obey him, we submit to him, he'll provide for us. And, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, uh, that that doesn't give a, a woman a pass to divorce a husband, you know, who's 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 abusive. Right, like if 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 a, if a husband's really abusing you, you know you should you should distance yourself from that, you know. But sometimes, you know, there's a difference between divorcing somebody and distancing yourself somebody. But that's another message, you know, because um, the, the Bible does say. I want you to remind you that in First Corinthians chapter seven, the Bible says, "For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife." Right? What does that mean? That means that even though you, as a wife, are obeying the commandments of God, obeying your true leader, and you know, God, remember, God commanded you to submit to your husband. So even if you have a husband who doesn't believe in God, he's doing wrong, um, he's mistreating you, you can sanctify your husband. And you know, and remember, God's your ultimate leader, and God told you submit to your husband. And and God will still protect you. He'll provide for you, even though. Your husband may not be doing everything that's right. But you, that's a different message. <laughs> I digress. What I want to talk about um, is Saul right now. King Saul. So King Saul became king at the age of 30. He was a handsome man. He was a tall man. He was a strong man. You know, he had all the attributes that you would consider an alpha male. And, you know, and, and, and when he became king, he, he, the first thing he did was won a great victory uh, for Israel. But then he messed up, he disobeyed God, he he, he uh, screwed up, he knew uh, God told him to do one thing, he did another thing, and, and God said, you know what, just for that, I'm going to punish you, and, and, and that means no longer will your lineage take on the kingdom. That means your son, after you, King Saul, when you die, will not be king. It's going to be somebody else. Anyway, and then, and then King David uh, gets anointed by Samuel to take over, eventually, and then you know the famous story of uh, David and Goliath. David goes out there and defeats Goliath in a miraculous victory. And um, right after that battle, Israel is praising David. So that opens up, uh, opens us up to um, the message I want to talk about today. Is First Samuel chapter eighteen. Um. So let's get into this message. Uh, we're going to start in verse number five. The Bible says. And David went out, whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved him wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. So basically, King David, you know, became a high-ranking officer in the military. And, you know, he was winning battles and doing good, and everybody liked him, right? Even though he wasn't the alpha, he wasn't the king. Anyway, verse 6. And it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out all, out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, and met King Saul uh, with tabrets, with joy, with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his, uh, his thousands, and, and David his ten thousands. So the Israelite women from all nations, are, all tribes of Israel are coming in and praising 
uh, David, giving him recognition and honor. David, the beta, young David, right? I mean, he just defeated Goliath, and he and he's out there, and he's defeating more battles and doing so awesome that instead of praising King Saul, the Alpha, they're praising David. Anyway, let's continue in verse 8. And Saul was very wroth. That means he's very mad. And the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can we have more but... Uh, and what... Can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day forward. So Saul right here, we can see Saul's getting envious of David. He's mad that, you know, they're praising David as a greater uh, warrior than him. And and Saul's got his eyes on him. He's fixated on, on David. Um, he's envious of him. And, and instead of celebrating uh, David's victory, because, you know, David actually did him a favor and, and, and won these battles, right, for the king. He fought for the king, for the kingdom of Israel. And, you know, and he's scared that David's going to take over his place as king. Let's continue. Verse, verse number 10. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand. And at other times, <clears throat> and there was a javelin in Saul's hand, and Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David in, uh, even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his uh, pretense twice. Uh, it's kind of confusing um, to read. But uh, basically, that just means, you know, Saul tried to kill David. He was so envious of him that he, that he took this weapon, this javelin, and he slung it at him twice, trying to kill David. And David, and and David, instead of fighting back, he he just dodged it. Right? God protected him, and he helped him uh, survive that. Um, and and instead of fighting back, he left the rest in God's hands. You know how how many women you know accuse their husbands of being abusive, and 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 in, and instead of just standing back, right? And uh, letting God deal with it, they they go and they they fight back, right? They take you to divorce court, they take your children, um, they take you for all you got, right? They they run you through the cleaners, they they gossip about you, about everybody, and tell everybody how bad you are. David didn't do that. He still loved the king. He still respected the king. Don't get me wrong, though. You know, I'm not I'm not saying that if you're in an abusive relationship, somebody's trying to kill you. You know, that you should stay in that relationship, right? That's that that's pretty dangerous. That takes a lot of faith, you know, but but that's exactly what David did here, right? Whether it's right or wrong, that's what David did because he refused to go against God's anointed king, right? God anointed King Saul to be king. And and, and David just demonstrated um amazing faith um by, by not fighting back, by saying, No, no, I'm still gonna continue to honor um the king of Israel. Anyways, verse twelve. And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul remo removed him from him, and made him his captain over a thousand. He, and he went out and came in before the people, and David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. And, and um, I'm going to stop there. Verse uh, fifteen. Uh, what I, what I want to note here, real quick, though, in, in this in this passage, is that young David, he didn't envy Saul. He didn't envy his his uh, the fact that he was king. He 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 was just uh, being a humble servant of the Lord. He just wanted to do what was right by God. What he learned from the Bible. And, and you can keep reading on in the story, and see that David didn't even think he was uh, worthy of marrying the daughter. Of King Saul, that's that's how humble he was. He said, "Cause cause King Saul offered uh, his daughter in, in marriage to King da or not King David, but young David, and uh, David said, well, 'I'm not I'm not worthy of her. You know, I'm just as humble sheep herder.' But he had tremendous faith in God. You know, he didn't he didn't do what he did for fame and glory. He just believed in God and he had faith that God would win his battles for him. And you know, God blessed him." For for, it. but King Saul he became envious. You know what is envy? Many people think that envy 
and jealousy are kind of the same thing, but there's a difference between envy and jealousy. What is it? You know, jealousy um, isn't bad, right? In fact, the Lord God says that his name is jealous. We, we serve a jealous God. The God of the Bible is jealous. You know, Exodus chapter 34 verse 14 says, For thou shalt worship no other God. It's the first commandment. For the Lord, whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. You know, jealous is, is like when you're married to somebody and you, you don't want your spouse doing anything wrong, right? Like the Bible says, a wife must reverence her husband, right? Respect him. Submit to him. Excuse me. So, you know, if she's showing reverence to some other man, you know, instead of her husband, she's doing something wrong, you know, and that's going to make her husband jealous, and rightfully so. He has every right to be jealous. He should be jealous. You know, now, now I'm not saying a woman can't recognize another man's achievements. Maybe he helped her out with something. You know, maybe uh, her husband wasn't around and he lifted something for her, whatever. You know, I'm not saying she can't say thank you. But there's a difference between saying thank you and reverencing another man, right? So, you know, what is envy? How, do, how does that differ from jealousy? Well, envy is basically... Uh, like coveting something that's not yours or somebody that's not yours. You know, the 10th commandment says, uh, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife um, or any of your, thy neighbor's possessions or, you know, his ox and all this other stuff. So envy is just a more severe covetousness. You know, envy takes it one step further. Envy is where you not only are coveting something that isn't yours, but you actually are you know, despising or you hate this person that has something that is not yours and, and you're willing to, to curse them or, or do bad to them or wish ill thoughts against them because they have it and you don't, right? You can't get along with them. You can't be their friend because you you just, you're so mad that they have what you want and, you, and you're mad at him for it. And, you know, this is really dangerous because look what it did to King Saul. You know, he almost murdered King David because he was so envious that he was getting praise and glory and King Saul wasn't, right? And, you know, David didn't do anything but good. He didn't deserve um, to be uh, attacked, right? He actually helped Saul. He helped him fight the battles and he defeated Goliath for Israel, you know? Um, but, you know, that's why God said, don't even covet your neighbor's possessions because that leads to envy, which is far worse. Uh, but next, you know, I want to explain why we don't have any reason to envy, right? Why we don't have any reason to covet anybody else's possessions. For example, you know, King Saul, he, he did not improve his situation at all by envying David, right? Could, would, would anybody read this passage and say, oh, you know, it, uh, it's really good. It, it, it actually wasn't so bad that, that Saul envied David, you know. In fact, if you read even further on into this story, King Saul eventually, his envy leads him, uh, or um, he, he loses his son Jonathan. His son Jonathan, his firstborn son Jonathan, who King Saul wanted to take the throne after him and become king, his envy leads to Jonathan's death, right? So the moral of the story is your envy is either going to kill you or it's going to kill somebody else or, you know, it's just going to bring nothing but bad things into your life. So if you're envious of another man or, or another woman's accomplishments, whether it be good or bad, you know, you, you, you know, if, if you think that it's so great that another man has good looks and money and fame and, and you want it and you're mad at him because he has it and you don't, that's envy, and, and that's that's bad, you know, that's going to lead nothing but negativity into your life, and you're, or maybe you're a woman, or maybe you're a woman, and you see another woman, and she's younger than you, she's more pretty than you, um, or she's married to a, uh, a guy you like more, you know, and you say, and you think to yourself, why, why, why is she married to him, and I'm not, I, I'm prettier than her, I'm better than her, right, and, and maybe you are, maybe you are prettier, maybe you are better than her, but if you're talking about her behind her back, if you if you secretly wish ill will against her that she breaks up with this guy, or you're or you're trying to sabotage their relationship so that you can uh, sneak in and get him, you know all that envy in your heart, 
it's going to turn against you. It's going to eat you alive from the inside. And, you know, even worse is God's not going to bless you. God's going to curse you just like just like he didn't bless Saul, you know. And, and look back what it says in verse 18. This is scary, right? And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. So God, he can send an evil spirit upon you. That should scare you. That scares me. You know, that if that, that's reason enough to not want to even covet or anything. Because, hey, God could say, yeah, I'm going to send an evil spirit on you. You know, who knows what that evil spirit can do? It can kill you. Can, it can kill those close to you. I mean, King Saul lost Jonathan, right? So what can we do about this? How can we avoid becoming envious of others? You know, how can we help others not to be envious of us? Well, the first thing I think is, you know, the less you have, the less people could be envious of you, right? So if you're, if you're, if you want to be the flashiest person and you, and you know, you want to have all these material possessions, you know, that's why, you know, Jesus always talks about um, giving, give to the poor. It's better <laughs> because if you if you're constantly giving to people, that means you're not going to have as much and you're going to have less for people to envy. But what could have, what could Saul have done? to avoid his envy in this situation. You know, what do you think led Saul to become so envious in the first place? Right? Remember I said covetous covetousness leads to envy. Well, look, King Saul, he was envious of David because I mean, here's this younger guy. He's not established. He's just a sheep herder. He's not even a warrior. And and he goes and defeats Goliath and saves Israel. Even though the king couldn't, right? So he's so David became more famous than he did, you know. So the way I think of it is, you know, there's always going to be a younger guy. There's always going to be a smarter guy or or a more handsome guy than you, or you know, if you're a woman, there's always going to be a younger, more prettier girl, more more attractive woman, <laughs> right? You know, somebody's always going to outdo you. There's always a bigger fish in the sea. So you know, what should Saul have done? What what could have what could he have done? You know, he, he might have been able to say, hey, you know, I'm not going to compare myself to you, David. You know, and, and we shouldn't do that either. You know, if you want to compare yourself to anybody, compare yourself to Jesus Christ. That'll humble you real quick. You know, then you'll say to yourself, man, I need, I need a lot of work to do on myself. You know, and you won't be worried about other other people. You know, you don't have to worry about, well, what the Joneses have, Right. Well, I mean, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, to love one another as I have loved you. That's his commandment to us. To love our fellow neighbor, our fellow man. You know, imagine if Saul would have just loved David. And if he, and if he would have seen all the praise that David was getting for what David did. And he, and he went up to him and he said, hey brother, you know, what can I do for you? I'm, I'm really, I'm proud of you, you know. I'm going to get down on my knees and I'm going to wash your feet. You know, that's what Jesus did to his apostles. He said, you deserve it. You guys deserve it. And they said, no, no, who are we? The, you shouldn't be washing our feet, Jesus. And he said, no, I'm going to show you an example. Right? King Saul could have did that. And he would have probably not fell into this envy. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to throw... I'm, um, he, he could have said, you know what, David? I'm so proud of you. I'm going to throw you a huge party, huge celebration with, with all the works, cake, ice cream, uh, everything for everybody, the whole, every tribe's invited. You know, King Saul could have did that. He had that in their power. He had that in his power. And the Bible says, you know, when you do good for other people, it lifts you up, right? So, you know, now I'm not saying to go around and high five guys who are sleeping with, uh, with all the, uh, um, you know, with all the whores and all the different kinds of women out there. Because, you know, if somebody's doing something wrong, you definitely don't want to praise them for that. Um, you want to pray for them, not praise them. You know, Proverbs 25 says, in, in, chap in, in verse 21, it says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. And the Lord shall reward thee. You know, so, so, you know, Jesus said, love your enemies. 
that doesn't mean that doesn't mean high five <laughs> high five the guy who 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 stole your wife from you or you know the wife the girl who cheated on you right no, no, no that just means pray for them pray that they'll get it right you know you know that woman who who may have ghosted you for no reason pray for her you know <laughs> like i said that doesn't mean you pray oh dear god please strike her with lightning so she <laughs> please please uh, you know have some sickness come upon her no 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 that's not what i'm saying you know i mean legit pray for her and and ask god lord please help her turn from her wicked ways please help her draw closer to you and reform her life have mercy on her don't send her those evil spirits you know and that's how you can keep yourself pure and holy and if you're keeping yourself pure and holy you know, especially when you're praying and you're not and, and and you're not praying as an enemy of God, but a friend of God, right? Because Jesus said, if we keep God's commandments, we're His friends, His brothers, His sister, His daughter, son, whatever. You know, envy is very wicked, guys. Very, very wicked. Uh, you know, it, it starts off by coveting something that isn't yours, and then and then it turns into this sickness where you start hating this person and you want to destroy this person. So don't covet what's not yours. Um, but be, be, before I close this message, I want you guys to examine yourself. You know, is there anything that you're coveting of your neighbor? Maybe maybe uh, you like uh, their car or their job or anything like that. They're, 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 oh, they're married and you're not married. You know, they, 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 whatever it is, whatever it is, I want you to examine yourself. And is there anybody that you dislike because, you know, maybe they have something that you don't. Maybe they have opportunities that you don't. And if there is, you know, just confess it to God. Pray to God and say, hey, God, I really want such and such. Whatever it is, tell, tell God what you want. And, and tell God, you know, the only righteous way that I can get it is through you. If you give it to me. And I know, God, that you're powerful enough to give it to me. You know? And, and, and keep that between you and God. And say, God, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow your commandments. Whether you give it to me or not, I'm, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to serve you. You know, just like David did. You know, he didn't fight Goliath so he could become king and get all this praise. He just said, hey... I'm going to do it because it's the right thing to do. And let me also say this, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll close with this. If you notice somebody being mean to you, ghosting you, ignoring you, whatever it may be, right? It could be because they're envious of you. So what, what, do, you need, what do you do in that situation? Well, the first thing that you should do, the most important thing, is you need to make sure you're right with God. Make sure you're following the commandments. Are you going to church? Are you reading your Bible? Are you getting a sin out of your life? Right? Make sure you're right. Because if you're right, God will protect you. This person cannot harm you if God's if God's looking after you. Right? If God be for us, who could be against us? But the second thing you can do is you can pray for them. Obviously, right? You can pray for them. Legitimate prayer, like I talked about. But also... I want you to remember how um, also David, he did not fight back against uh, King Saul. You know, even though David had multiple opportunities to kill King Saul and he could have killed him, he showed him mercy. You know, and I think that's what, that's what Jesus meant when he said, love your enemies. You know, show mercy, even though you might have an opportunity to, to rebuke them and, and humiliate them, don't do it, you know. Just stay focused on what you need to do what, uh, to be right with God. And, and, and let God fight your battles for you. You know, so even though we can't, we can't stop people from uh, envying us, we can't stop them from coveting what we have, but we can choose how to respond when that does happen. Just like David responded, you know. So have mercy on, on people who envy you. You know, have mercy on people you know, have mercy on your enemies and realize that the sin of envy is deadly. And Jesus taught us to love. And the Bible says that vengeance belongeth 
to God, not to us. So it's not our job to um, destroy people who are envying against us. Anyway, that's my message, guys. I don't, <laughs> this message went so long. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you learned something, and God bless you. And as always, I'm going to give God the last word. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Um, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to read the whole chapter. You guys have a good day. God bless. The Bible says, Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth in all things, endureth all things, charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as also I am known. For now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest is charity. Amen. God bless.